are mentally dependent on a substance. What God was saying to me was that I mean, like you may have been praying for a long time. We're in a month of prophecy. You may have been praying. It's the things that you're saying. You're prophesying. That power comes from the tongue when you speak. We're prophesying. The things that you're saying is affecting your life, and we're not taking it as seriously as we should be taking it. Our tongue has the power of death and life. It holds that power of death and life. So when we say things, I realize even God revealed to me something that this church always says all the time when we say, oh, you're so bad. We're so bad. We're so bad. Stuff like that as a joke, as a joke. But it's not a joke in the spiritual realm. The spiritual realm is not a joke. That's what God was revealing to me. The spiritual realm is not a joke. In the physical, you can take it as a joke. But it has, it's doing something up there. It's doing something in the physical. It's doing something in the physical. So the reason, the reason why we're praying, we're praying, we're praying, we feel like we're stuck. We feel like we're not moving. We feel like we're not moving. It's because of our tongues. And God also revealed to me is a spirit of doubt. So you may come to church, learn about prophesying. We learn about prophesying, speaking life. When we speak life, when we go home, are we still speaking life when we go home? Are we doubting? Are we doubting God? Like, is God really gonna get me out of this situation? That's what it is. That's what God told me it was. It was doubt. We may talk, we can talk all we want. We can say oh, we're gonna be rich, we're gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. All you want, but if you don't have faith. If you do not have faith, that's where we're falling. We can speak all we want. You can speak life all you want into yourself. If you do not have faith, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Faith as small as a mustard seed can move mountains. If you do not have faith, you're just speaking for no reason. You're just speaking. It's just air coming out of your mouth. So... I said everything there I didn't need. God was telling me that the reason why, I know we passed the fire conference, got everything done, that whole month is done. But I was wondering, I was asking God, like, why are you pushing me so hard to sing this song, this fire song? Why are you pushing me so hard? Because, like, I, I already sent my songs. I, I sent this song very late. I already sent, I sent this song very late. God said, God said to me, as we sing this song, God is going to do things on the inside of you. He wants to burn every single negative tongue on spirit. He wants you guys to speak life over yourself. He's going to burn every single negative tongue in the name of Jesus. And every tongue that is speaking against you, you never know who is speaking against you. He wants to burn it now in the name of Jesus. He wants that spirit of doubt to go. So the, the choir, the choir is going to sing fire. I want all of you guys to pray in tongues. If you can pray in tongues, if you cannot pray in tongues, just say you receive the fire. You receive the fire. Ask God to burn that negative tongue. The way you speak negatively against yourself. The way you speak negatively against other people. These other people are God's children also. You're also God's children. You cannot speak negatively about God's children. God loves them the same amount as they love you, as he loves you. Why would you speak negatively? No, 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 no. God said he wants to, he wants to take away that child. He's going to pray it right now. He's going to pray. Pray, 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 pray. destroy the devil comes to steal kill and 
destroy. When we speak bad things on ourselves, when we speak bad, even as a joke, you're destroying your inner spirit man. You're destroying yourself. That is what God revealed to me this evening. You destroy yourself and you're glorifying the devil. You are glorifying the devil when you speak negatively about yourself. Because God is saying, God is saying that you're fearfully and wonderfully made. God is saying that I have a greater calling for you. God is saying that your destiny is there. Just go. And you're saying, I don't know. I don't know if that's me. I don't think that's me. I don't think I'm supposed to do that. The devil is lying to you in the name of Jesus. The devil is lying to you in the name of Jesus. Only the devil... Hey, you guys ever think, where do your thoughts come from? Do you ever wonder, where do your thoughts come from? The devil is putting these thoughts in your head. And you believe it to the point where you speak it. You believe it so well that you speak it. God has given us authority to trample over snakes and scorpions. You do not have to be speaking that way above yourself. You have fruits of the spirit, self-control, right? Self-control. Think before you speak. Think before you speak. That is what God is saying. Pray in tongues right now. Fire, fire, fire. Go, go, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Grab a partner, we can grab a partner. We're gonna pray for each other, we're gonna pray. And then the rest of this service, everyone will receive something in the name of Jesus. Nobody will go back home the same. I want each and every one of you to pray for somebody. Nobody here must be left, their hand must be left low. I want to see everyone together, nobody alone, nobody should be alone. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, pray for your partner. Pray for your partner in the name of Jesus. Everyone should receive something tonight. Everything should, everyone should receive something tonight. In the name of Jesus, we shall not go back home the same way we came. It's not, it's not, it's not normal. You cannot come in the spirit of God and go back home the same way that you came. That spirit of God lives inside of you. We are created in His image in the name of Jesus. We are made to be like Him in the name of Jesus. We are made to be like Him. Pray that you will be the like image of God. You are already the like image of God. Pray that God's Spirit will reflect on the inside of you. Pray that His Spirit will reflect on the inside of you. And that as you go out, as you go out to the world, as you go out to the world, your glory, the glory of God will shine through you. The light of God shall not shine through you. When you go back to school, when you go back to work, when you go back to work, they will not recognize you. They will not recognize you. Because you do not look like this world. You do not, you do not look like this world. You're not beings of this world. We're only here temporarily. This is not our home. Heaven is our home. We must look like God. In the name of Jesus. Let's go. 
He's so kind. Well, how many of you believe that in the house? I said we bless him because he's so good. Because he's so amazing. How many young people in this house believe that we serve the most high God? Come on. I said Jesus. I did not say Buddha. I did not say Allah. And I did not say Muhammad. I did not make a mistake on the name that I said. I said if you love Jesus, would you give God a shout in this house? Come on, if you love Jesus, if this generation loves the name of Jesus, would you give him a shout in this house? Come on, give him a shout in this house. If you don't know me, I'm, my name is Jesse, I'm the youth pastor of this church, and uh, welcome to River Jordan Ministries, welcome to River Jordan Ministries, I warmly welcome you to our home, and if this is your first time, I want to let you know that this is home for you now, this is home for you now, if 
this is your first time in the house, could I, could I see your hand? Could I see your hand if you've never been here before? There's a couple of people. Wow, 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 wow. Wow, if you're around them, would you just make them feel welcome? Would you welcome them somehow? Would you give them a River Jordan kind of welcome? Oh, come on, if you were welcoming me like that, I would not accept that kind of thing. I would never come back to that room. Would you make them feel welcome in the house? So if it's your first time, I want to warmly welcome you to the house of God. I want to thank you for being here. Thank you for worshiping with us. Listen, without further ado, this month and last month, I've been talking about the necessity of prophecy. I've been talking about prophecy, the prophetic, and um, I, I felt like I was led by the Spirit of God to, uh, if you're going to talk about the prophetic, doesn't it just make sense to invite the prophet of prophets? Yeah. Oh, come on, Arjun, is that how you appreciate prophets? I said, it just, doesn't it just make sense? been here for a while most people already know that RJM and Bridge we're literally family we are family oh do you know that in the house I said we're family so I know that I'm in the midst of family in the midst of people that I, I hold near and dear to me um, I want to honor everybody who's here if you came with prof I want to honor you of course my very twin brother even though I think I got a year on him but he's still my twin brother <laughs> Reginald I, I welcome you Malcolm my brother I welcome you and Prof himself I welcome you to the house and I honor you guys on a personal note the man we have speaking today um, is very near to me I don't remember a time I don't remember the last time I didn't know Prof for the, as long as my memory goes yeah, we're probably mad young when we met each other as far as my memory goes, I've known Prof for all that time, but uh, particularly in the last three years, um, this relationship for me has run deep, has run deep, necessary lessons. Uh, those who stay around me know I, I talk about Prof enough. Prof is my actual big brother. Uh, you can call me Jesse Darty or you can call him Ralph Kiriato, you can do whatever you want, but um, I love him. Um, and of course, we wouldn't even uh, wouldn't even be mounting the pulpit if we did not believe that he was a man of God, and and we trust this anointing so much. We honor him. But of course, I'm not foolish enough to let familiarity um, rob me of the fact that I know that we have an international prophet in our midst. Serious man of God, a man of God that goes from from continent to continent, country to country, city to city, preaching the word of God in miracles, hallelujah, in signs, in wonders, and most specifically in the prophetic. And that is why we have a prophetic oil bringing the word of God to us, demonstrating the power of God. And so I really don't want to take any more of his time at all because we need to hear this word. How many of you are ready for the word? Oh, I like that. How many of you are ready for the word in the house? So listen, RJM, without further ado, would you do me a favor and welcome to the pulpit none other than Prophet Ralph Darte II and do it the RJM way. Come on. Come on, somebody celebrate Jesus in this place. Come on, somebody celebrate. Celebrate him, celebrate him, celebrate Jesus. He's worthy of the praise and the adoration. I wish you would just throw your head back real quick, lift your voice up, clap your hands and celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Come on, somebody, just bless him. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy. He's worthy. We bless you. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. 
Manso talabakosha talabakosaya. Lord, you're worthy. You're worthy of it. You're worthy of it. You're worthy. 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 You're so worthy. You're so worthy. You're so worthy. Just, just forget about yourself for a couple seconds and just begin to bless the name of Jesus. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Come on, just give me those. He's worthy. Forget about yourself. He's worthy. Mama, my soul, you're worthy, Lord. You're worthy. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. Not only is he worthy, but he's holy. He's holy. He's righteous. He's omnipresent. He's our helper. He's our provider. I don't know if there's anybody here who's known God as a provider. He's been providing for you since Monday to Tuesday. Tuesday to Wednesday, and even last week, Thursday, Friday, he's been providing, he's been good, he's been a provider. You almost lost your mind last week, but he kept you. You almost didn't wake up today, but he kept you. God's been a provider, he's been there, he's been good, he's been there all this while because he's a good, good father. Woo. Oh, I feel God in this place, I feel him. I feel him. I feel him. Oh, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Because you're good. When we think about the prophetic anointing and we think about what prophets were sent to do in the Bible, the Lord tells us in his word that prophets were sent into specific places into specific seasons, into, into specific territories to speak those people into a new season and into a new dispensation. And so tonight, we didn't just come here to worship, but we came here so that God can shift you and shift RJM and shift this ministry into a new season and into a new dispensation. And so if I could prophesy in this room that the Lord is moving you from where you are to a higher level, would you believe me if I said that the Lord wants to shift your money from where it is to a high dimension? Would you believe me? I don't know. Oh, I, I don't know if you're here tonight. I don't know if you're... I, would you believe me if I said that God wants to shift you from where you are to another level, to another dimension? That God wants to turn around your shame and give you glory. I don't know if you would believe me if, if I told you that God wants to turn around your family. Your family has been through too much. But God says tonight, I want to turn your family around. I want to turn your family around. I want to I wanna turn your life around. I wish you could turn around as a prophetic sign that God is turning you around. I wish you would turn around as a prophetic sign that God is turning your life around, that God is changing your story, that God is giving you glory for shame, that God is giving you double honor. I wish you were, oh my goodness. The Lord said, the Lord said that this church is not going backwards, but it's going forward. I wish I just had some hundred people in this room who would just who would just go with me. The Lord says, I'm literally causing you to go forward where the enemy tried to slow you down. What God says is, I will not allow you to be delayed. You might have been delayed for a little while, but you will never be denied. God says that this church <laughs> will never be defeated. God said that this church, you didn't hear what I said. God said that this church will never be defeated. Are you here tonight? We will never be defeated. We serve a God who's a strong. We will never be defeated. He said you're going forward, not backwards. He says, you're moving, you're moving, you're moving, you're moving. I heard the Lord say that he's giving this church supernatural speed. I, I heard the Lord say he's giving you supernatural speed. 
there will no longer be delay but there is speed that is coming to you i prophesy speed in your education may you never be denied i prophesy speed in your money i prophesy speed in your destiny May you get to that place when God needs you to get there. May you never be denied. I prophesy right now that God is moving you from one level to the next level to the next level. You will not be denied, but there's a supernatural speed. I wish there was a hundred people in this room where you would lift up your voice and shout because God... He's given you. He's given you that speed. Hallelujah. 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 There's a speed of the Holy Ghost that is coming over Ottawa that is coming over RJM that is coming over Pastor Jesse that is coming over RJM music that's coming over your life God says I will give you speed you won't know how in a year's time you'll look back and see that the Lord has been he's been good he'll be there he'll keep you He'll keep you from falling. Listen, I want you to go to three people and tell them that your life is changing. Your life is changing. Your life is changing. It's, it's changing. Go to three people. Tell them your life is changing. You can never be the same. 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 We will never, ever be defeated. And because God is the greatest power, we will never, ever be defeated. And because God Never. 
we declare victory we shall never say we shall never say we shall never say we shall would you grab the hand of that miracle that you're standing beside grab that person's hand Father, we bless your holy name for what you're doing in this atmosphere, for what you're doing in this room. Father, we thank you, Lord, because we're here in your presence, and we know and we believe that we will never be defeated. It doesn't matter what comes our way. It doesn't matter what enemy comes our way. We know and we believe that we will never be defeated. Why? Because we are on the winning side. We may have lost a battle, but we know that if you're with us, we'll never lose the war. Father, we know that we will never be defeated. RJM will never be defeated. Ottawa will never be defeated. Because you are standing with us and you are upholding us with your righteous right hand. And so, Father, tonight we bless you. We look to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Come on, for the last time, put those hands together. Come on, put those hands together. Put those hands together. Bless the name. Please be seated. It is such a pleasure to be here tonight. I uh, don't take this for granted. I want to take a minute to honor every single one of you for making the time to come out to this beautiful church on a Wednesday night. I don't take it lightly. I don't take it for granted. You could be anywhere in this city at this time, but you've decided to be here. And so I want to thank you so much for being here. Um, I see so many friends and family here. I, um, Of course, I want to honor the, the incredible leadership of RJM and every single person that makes this ministry move forward. If you're a leader in this church, would you please just be on your feet? I just want to honor you if you're a leader here. I want to honor you. May God bless you. May God bless you. May God bless you. May God bless you. Every single person. May God bless you for what you're doing for this incredible church. May God bless you. May God bless you. May God bless you. You are not a leader. You are a pastor. Help me honor. Let me say this. Pastor Jesse, come. He, he's a, he's my little brother. I have, you know, so I have many little brothers, um, but he is my little brother. Uh, yesterday, you know, we even had a conversation, and I even just whipped him up a little bit because that's what big brothers can do. And um, I said, you know what? I'm going to be here tomorrow, um, and I'll be here to lift your hands up. But I want you to know something: that the hand of God is upon him. And God is doing great things in his life. He has been faithful in a little thing, so God has given him his own. I uh, remember, you know, the times where he used to play piano for me because now he's too big. But uh, he used to play and he would dedicate all of his time to being with us at Bridge just to play and worship with us and he would lead our entire band. But then there came a moment where he said, Prof, the Lord is calling me to open up RJM and um, you know, push this youth ministry. And I said, you know what, go forth. I love you so much and I will be there. If there's anything that you need, just don't hesitate to call upon me and I'll be right there. And um, I honor you for what you're building, for what you're doing. And I want you church, please do me a favor and appreciate your man of God. <laughs> If you don't celebrate him, I'm going to take him with me. If you don't celebrate him, I'm going to take him with me. I'm going to take him with me. I, I'll take him with me. Okay. Great man that God is raising, that God is using. And um, man of God, I honor you as well. The man of God that, I mean, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Nene is here as well, and I say, may God bless you, may God bless you, I 
see my man. Is it Kevin? Kevin? I remember that prophetic word. May God bless you. May God bless you. May God bless you for what you got to do. Isn't the music here just incredible? I'm telling you. The, the music. I remember last year at Capital Revival, we threw on Never Be Defeated, and we were going crazy. And we're about to do that next week, Saturday, if you already know. We're, 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 we're going. We're going. But uh, I'm, I'm so glad that you guys, amazing drumming, amazing uh, bass playing, and the piano. May God bless every single one of you. May God bless you. The singers, may God bless you. Now, I, uh, I didn't come here uh, alone. I came with family. Um, I just have seen um, our pastor, uh, Reverend uh, Kira, just walk into the building. Can you please help him? Pastor, we celebrate you. I feel like I should sit down because I don't know what to say if pastor is here. I have no... Pastor, we celebrate you. Uh, I'm so humbled to be speaking on your platform. Thank you so much, sir. I've, I've been told that you just come from Boston, is it? Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much, Pastor. Um, of course, I did not come here alone. I came here with a lot of my family from the Bridge uh, Youth Church as well. Um, any of my Bridge family here, do you want to just say it? So good. So good. I see so many people here. I see Alethea. I see him. I see you right there. May God bless you. Alethea is there. May God bless you as well. May God bless you. May God bless you. May God bless you. Is there somebody else here? I can't see. Is that Sabrina? Is that her? May God bless you. You're always hiding. I don't know why. May God bless you, my brother. May God bless you, my brother. You're accompanying my, my, my favorite Alethea. May God bless you. And I see so many people. I see Reggie's here and I see AJ's here and Elizabeth is here and Imani is here and I saw Tess and Grace and Taita and Naveen and Savannah and am I missing anybody? Sarah is back there. Uh, Brian, Tess, I saw her. Brian, Pet Plenty, everybody, Danny, Elsid, anybody else? I Listen, I, I just love you guys. Thank you so much for coming through and being a blessing. And so let's get into the word. You guys ready to hear the word of God? Yeah. All right, so uh, please, you can please be seated. I, I'm going to be brief. I told Pastor Jesse I wouldn't take too long. Um, we're going to flow as the Spirit leads, but I, I, I want to be um, honoring of time. Um, I, I understand that we've been in a series talking about the prophetic, and I want to be able to add my voice to the great teachings that have been coming. Um, I also see Ray is here as well somewhere. Is Ray here in the back somewhere? He's right there. God bless you, my younger brother. Um, we're going to be diving right in. So the prophetic is something that is very dear to my heart. When I was at the age of 19 years old, um, a man of God came into my church, and I was in the crowd like many of you like this, and the man of God walked directly to me, and he said, you have been chosen by God to be a prophet. And so what he did was he went directly to me and he laid his hands upon me. And as soon as he laid his hands upon me, I felt electricity run through my body. And if I could be honest, when I was younger in the church, I thought that, you know, people just fell down just because they just wanted to fall down and just be all dramatic and stuff like that. Like, yo, you're doing too much. You're doing way too much. But I could tell you the truth that when the man of God laid his hands upon me, I fell down and I felt, I felt electricity run through my body. And as soon as I stood back up, he told me, he said, listen, you've been ordained, you've been anointed as a prophet. And from today, I change your thinking. I change your understanding. And from today, you will no longer just be Ralph, but you will be Prophet Ralph. And it was from that very moment in 2014, at TLC, at the age of 19 years old, 
That, that is when my thinking began to change. That's when my hunger for God began to change. And that's when I was, I was brought into this prophetic world where I had to go through some training, through some mentoring, through some, you know, just, just the whole nine, just to be able to become the prophet that God has called me to be. And so it was at that very moment that my life completely changed. If I could be honest, beforehand, I'd be going out clubbing and, you know, I'd be going over to the Gatineau side because I was a bit younger. And I think the club that we used to go to was called Maison or something like that. I, I think it was called Maison something. Do any of you guys know any of the club names on the Gatineau side? That was a test. You shouldn't know no names. That was a, that was a test. But uh, I remember we were going to Maison on Friday nights, and then when I, when I was 19, we switched over to the Ottawa side. We went to some clubs called The Living Room and some other clubs called People Night Club. And, um, you know, we would spend all of, our, all of our weekend there. But I'm telling you, after I had that one encounter with God, with the prophetic anointing under that man of God, my entire appetite for things of the world completely changed. And so instead of going out you know, clubbing and drinking and partying and smoking, I was staying at home and reading my word, writing notes in my, in my journal, in my Bible, this is what the Lord is saying, and this is what the Lord is showing me. And literally there was a drastic change all because of one encounter that I had with God. And now we're in this space right now, and you have the choice and the ability to step into a moment in your life where you're saying, God, I want you to encounter me despite what I've been through, despite what I've done. I'm coming to you right now, God, and I say, Lord, encounter me right here in this place. You have that option, you have that decision right in this moment where God is saying that I'm here in this space, I want to encounter you, but do you also want to encounter me? And so I want you to understand that God wants to speak to you. God wants to put a specific grace on you, a specific calling on you, an anointing on you. But you also need to come to the point where you say, God, I'm not running no more. God, I want to encounter you for myself. So this room right now is no longer just an ordinary room, but I want you to be focused on God for yourself. Forget about who's beside you. Forget about how normal and how regular things are here every single week when you come here. But I want you to know something, that there is a wind of God that is blowing in this room. And I don't want you to miss the wind. I don't want you to miss the moment. Because God is here, and he wants to change you, and he wants to touch you, and he wants to speak to you. And so tonight, I want you to know that this is your opportunity for, for you to encounter God in a new way. There's one thing about God. God does not go anywhere without people having expectation. When God wants to encounter you, God would wait for you to say, God, okay, I'm ready, God, I want you to speak to me. And so tonight, the Lord said that he wants to speak to us in a new way, that he wants to encounter us in a new way. Amen. And so I want you to know that we're in for a great time tonight, and I want us quickly to turn our attention to the word of God. I'll be speaking from 1 Samuel chapter 3, and um, I want to honor my parents, Dr. Ralph and Mama Regina, and Pastor Kofi, my pastor, and from TLC and Campus Rush, on you. May God bless you. Thank you for allowing me to be here. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 2. I want to, to bring you alongside this story. This story is one that's very particular. It speaks about somebody who was like you and I, a very young person. He was a boy. And the Bible says that this boy, he gave his entire life to spending all of his days in the house of God. And something unique took place when he decided to give his entire life over to God. And so the Bible tells us here that his name was Samuel. And now the, the Bible tells us that Samuel one day was laying down on this altar on an altar, on a stage, he was laying down. And the Bible to read here, it says that it came to pass at that time while Eli was lying down in his place. Eli was Samuel's mentor or Samuel's pastor. And so the Bible says that Samuel was there lying down there and Eli, the Bible says here that Eli was 
was Samuel's pastor. Eli was lying, was lying down in this place. And when his eyes began to grow so dim that he could not see, verse 3, and before the lamp of God went out in the tabernacle of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and while Samuel was lying down, that the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, here I am. How many of us in this room answer when God calls you? How many of us answer when God tells you to stop DMing that guy? When God tells you to stop DMing that girl? How many of you actually obey when God speaks to you? When your pastor speaks to you, how many of you actually obey when he says, you know, stop all that gossiping, stop all that talking back and forth? How many of you guys actually obey when God begins to speak to you? And so we find ourselves here that the Lord is calling Samuel, saying, Samuel, Samuel. And what Samuel does in verse 5 is Samuel goes and he runs to Eli. And the Bible says, here I am, Eli, for you have called me. And he said, I did not call, lie down again. And he went and lay down. Verse 6, then the Lord called yet again, Samuel. So Samuel rose and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. And he answered, I did not call my son, lie down again. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. So he arose and went to Eli and said, here I am. For you did call me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord had called the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, go lie down. And it shall be, if he calls you, that you must say, speak, Lord. Can y'all just shout, speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Say it like you ate tonight. Say, speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. For your servant hears. So Samuel went and laid down in his place. I want to speak to you for the next few moments. From the subject, speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. In my house, there are so many, there are so many um, people in my house. Of course, as you know, I have uh, uh, three brothers. I have an older brother, Pastor Kofi. I have a younger brother, Raziah, and I have a younger brother again named uh, Reggie, as you as you all know. And um, in our house, it, it gets very interesting because every single one of us uh, have uh, the tendency to have AirPods in our ears when we're just, you know, going about our regular day in our house. And, you know, to make matters worse is most times a lot of the people in my house, I'm not even going to, you know, point blame and see who and tell you who the one who usually has his AirPods in on noise cancellation is uh, for the most part. I'm not going to just, you know, I'm not going to not going to give any attention to that individual who is sitting in this room. But for, for the most part, every single time I'm in the house and I'm I'm calling, I'm saying, Reggie, <laughs> I'm sorry, I gave it away. I'm, I'm sorry. I, 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 would, I would scream his name, I'd say, Reg, and I'm in my room, and he's, you know, probably in his room right beside mine, I'm calling him, Reggie, 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 and the man, I, he's, he's not responding back, I go to his room, and I see the man there, and he's just closing his eyes, listening to his BM, and listening to his bridge music, and whatever, and he's having a time, and I'm there screaming at the top of my lungs, brother, would you, I'm trying to talk to you, and this man had his AirPods in his ears, and he looks at me and says, huh, 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 what'd you say, what'd you I'm like, bro, I've been calling you for the past five minutes. And you know what I realized? I realized that it's, it's not that he didn't want to hear me when, when, when I was calling to him, but it's that he had something that was blocking his hearing from hearing my voice. And so we have to realize this, that it's not that we don't want to hear when God speaks, but it's that we have some people in our ear that are blocking us from hearing the voice of God. Are we here tonight? It's, it's not that we don't want to do what God is asking us to do, but there's sometimes there's certain distractions and sometimes there's certain feelings, sometimes there's certain things that are blocking us from hearing and accepting what God is trying to say. God is saying to us as a people in the city of Ottawa that he's trying to get our attention. He's trying to get us to look at him and to hear him. But what it is is that we have so many distractions, so many voices, so many things in our ears 
fears in our spirits in our minds that are blocking us from hearing what God is trying to say. Because if you had your ears open to the Spirit of God, you would hear that God is sending revival, not just to this church, but to this entire city. If your spirit was open, you would realize that there's something that has taken place in this city that every single person who is spiritual, who is connected to the voice of God, would know that God is doing a new thing in this city and in this church. And so we have to understand this, that we have too much in our spirits, too much in our ears, too much in our eyes that are blocking us from hearing when God is trying to speak to us. What is it that is blocking you from hearing what God is trying to tell you? For some of us, it's fear. For some of us, it's fear where there's certain things that we're afraid to give up because if we give that thing up, we might not be as cool as everybody else is. But let me tell you this, that sometimes you have to give up certain things to follow God. If you want to be an individual that makes impact, that hears what God is trying to say to a prophetic people, we have to know that God will access time and time again to sacrifice certain things in order to hear his voice clearly. What is it, and I'm gonna ask you this question one more time, what is it that you need to sacrifice to hear God more clearly? You know, it's interesting because God can speak to you a certain way and you can be comfortable right there. But how many of you know that there's a deeper way, there's a deeper place that God wants to speak to you from? Because when I read my Bible, my Bible tells me that the deep calleth unto the deep. And so it doesn't matter if you just gave your life to Christ, there's a deeper place for you to get to. If you've been a Christian for over 10 years, it doesn't matter. There's a deeper place for you to get to. It doesn't matter if you're a leader in this church. It doesn't matter if you've been on uh, baptized three or four times. You, you now start baptizing people. It doesn't matter if you're a leader, if you are a chaplain, if you're a saint. God says, I don't care who you are. Says, I don't care what you've done. There is a deeper place that I want to take you to, and it'll be at that place that I can speak speak to you in a new way. I don't know if there's anybody in this room that is looking for a fresh encounter from God. You're looking for a fresh encounter. I want to hear your voice. I want to hear you speak to me. I want to hear you talk to me. I want to hear you. I want to feel you. I want to hear you. God says that there's certain things that you're going to have to give up. You're going to have to give up some of those secret sins that you have in your private place. When nobody's watching and you're by yourself, God says, you have to give up that thing. I don't know what that thing is for you, but God says that there's that thing that you need to give up. For a lot of us, God would ask us to give up certain things in order for us to get to that place where we can hear him clearly. What the Bible tells us is the Bible tells us that the boy Samuel was on the altar. He lived in the church. He lived not just in the church. But he lived on the platform, in the stage, the most holy place is where Samuel lived. How many of you know that you cannot be doing any, you know, my dad says it like this, he says shakara, you can't do shakara, you can't do any nonsense, you can't do any random sketchy thing if your life is lived on the altar. Yeah. You know why? Because if you've, if you've done something crazy and you're outside sinning and then you try to come and live on the altar, God will just come and send an angel. will just kick you out of that place. Yeah. Yeah. But the Bible tells us that Samuel, the boy Samuel, the boy, the teenager, the young adult, the woman, the man, he lived his life on the altar. That means that everything about him was pure and holy. Yeah. And you, you wonder why it is that Samuel heard the voice of God when God was calling Samuel while he was sitting on the altar, while he was laying on the altar. When, 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 the, when, the, when, the, when the voice of God came, he, he thought that it was the voice of his pastor. Now, I want to ask you this. How submitted are you to your pastor? Because oftentimes when God speaks, it'll sound like the voice of your pastor. I think you missed it. I think, am I going, I think, I think I'm going too fast. Should I slow down? Okay, I'll slow down. All right, let me, let me take my time. I don't want to move too fast. Let me break it down like this. There's a level of purity and holiness that God is calling every single one of us to. 
If we are going to be prophetic people, people who hear the voice of God, people who speak the mind of God, we have to be individuals who can be holy and pure in order to hear what God is saying. God is not going to speak to you in your dirt and in your mess. And you're going to call yourself a prophet or a man of God or a prophetic person or a prophetess. When you are outside gossiping and lying and sinning and causing a ruckus, God's saying, that's not, that's, that's not my DNA. I don't, I don't mess with that. I don't do that stuff. And so in order for God to speak to you, you have to bring yourself to a place of holiness. And should I put it this way? A place of godliness. Where you take on the character of God, you take on the, the ideas of God, you take on the, 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 the walk of God, you become like God, you look like God. That's what God is desiring from us. And so we have to leave this place tonight understanding and knowing that in order for us to become the man and the woman of God in our homes, in our schools, at work, in this church, we have to be a people of holiness and purity, a people of prayer. Now, let me tell you this. Not all of us are perfect because I will be the first one to tell you that I am not perfect. But what I am is I'm trying. Did you hear what I said? I said, none of us are perfect, but we, we got to try to be like God. He says, he says, be holy for I am holy. And if we become holy, that is the only way that we'll be able to hear the voice of God in such a deep way, the same way that Samuel did. Now, let me push this thing a bit further. Can I go there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are we here together? Yes, sir. Can I go a bit further? Yes, sir. Can you handle it? Are you sure? Yes, sir. When God wants to speak to you, I want you to write this down. God will speak to you directly let me let me let me say this let me put it this way there are so many ways that god can speak to you but one of the ways that god enjoys speaking to you is god enjoys speaking to you directly he will come and he will speak to you in a still small voice he'll come to you like a whisper he'll say hey I want you to do this. I didn't like the way you spoke to your mom yesterday. I didn't like the way you spoke to your teacher. I didn't like the way you spoke to your boss. Can you go and apologize? And it'll be like a still small voice. It'll just come like a whisper. Sometimes it'll even feel like it's your own mind. It's your own thoughts. But that, that's actually the voice of God that is telling you that he's trying, to, he's trying to nudge you to do something. So God enjoys speaking to you directly in firstly a still small voice. Secondly, how does God speak to you? God will speak to you in dreams. God will speak to you in dreams when you go to sleep and you're, you know you see yourself all rich and wealthy or you see some, some tragedy that's about to happen and God is trying to warn you and God is trying to tell you to, to pray about a certain thing. God will sometimes speak to you in a dream. The third way that God you know, speaks to you is God will speak to you sometimes even in a vision. And visions are almost like, you know, there's different types of visions. There's closed visions, open visions. I won't get into all of that. But essentially, God will even try to speak to you sometimes even when you begin to like daydream and you kind of see yourself, you know, all rich and wealthy and you see yourself with your children and married and it's not like you're asleep, but you're awake and you're seeing all of these things. And so God will speak to you firstly, audibly. He'll, he'll speak to you in a still, small voice. That's the first way. The second way is God will speak to you in dreams. Other ways, God will speak to you in a vision. Let's go back. What's the first way that God will speak to you? Audibly. Audibly, yes. You guys are very smart. The second way God will speak to you is a... Is, is a what? Dreams. And the third way God will speak to you is a... These are three specific ways. These are not all the ways, but these are some ways yeah. that God would speak to you. Are we together now? Yes, sir. Are we together? Yes, sir. Now, another way that God can speak to you through, and this is, you know, in the Old Testament, this was his choice method, is God will speak to you through a prophet. Are we together? Yes, sir. Are you sure? God will speak to you. God will send a prophetic voice your way. He will send your pastor. He will send a prophet your way to speak. 
speak the thus saith the Lord. This is what God is asking of you to do in this season. This is what God is saying to your family. This is what God is saying over your future. God will speak to you. God will send a prophetic voice, a prophetic voice person. You know how I know this? Because the Bible tells us in Amos chapter 3 verse 7 that God does nothing unless he first reveals it to his servants, the prophets. God wants to speak to you and sometimes he would send people your way to give you a prophetic message. He would send a prophetic voice. He'll send a prophet. He, he, says, he says he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets god wants to encounter you and the, the beautiful thing about this is that the prophetic is something that everybody who is a christian should desire yes. the prophetic office is is, is 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 a place that men and women have the ability to occupy and the prophetic office is you know, when we look through the Bible, we see all these prophets, Prophet Samuel, Prophet Elijah, these individuals, they occupied the prophetic office because the prophetic is an entire world in and of itself. But the truth is that there are certain people that God has ordained as prophets. Now, the question that a lot of us ask is, how do I know if I'm a prophet? How many of you guys have had that question before? How, how do I know that I'm a prophet? How do I know that, that I'm a prophetic part? How do I know? Now, I want to give some clarity to that question tonight. All right. So one of the ways that you will know if you are operating or if you are in the prophetic office is firstly, you would be like prophet Jeremiah. You would be born with the prophetic. You would be born with it. I'm trying to break this down so you understand it. How do you know that you are called to the office of a prophet where, 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 where you can then be ordained by your pastor or by a prophetic uh, a mentor that is around you? Firstly, what happens is you, you, there's one way that you would be born with the prophetic, all right? So the Bible tells us in Jeremiah that before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. That means that there are certain people that are born with the prophetic. You are born with the prophetic. When I was born, my father held me in the hospital and he always tells me this story. And he tells me that as soon as the doctor put me in his hands, he heard the voice of God audibly. And God said, son, this baby that you're holding is a prophet to the nations. And I can tell you, Nene, for all of my entire life, I did not know what on earth a prophet was. I didn't know. My dad would always come to me and say, oh, you're a prophet, you're a prophet. You're. And I'm like, I have no idea what that is. And you know what would happen to me is when I would go to school, I would go to, to, to basketball practice, what would happen, Jesse, is I would see things before it happened. And so, for example, I would, like, I would see somebody with like braces in, on their teeth. And I would go to them and be like, yeah, do you have braces? Like, oh, no, I don't have braces. And then a year later, they have braces on the face. I'm like, I, I saw this before. Like, I, I seen this before. It was like a deja vu. I already seen this. And, and, and that happened to me so much, but I didn't have language. I didn't have anybody who would teach me like I'm teaching you about the prophetic. There's some people that are born prophets. Secondly, how do you receive the prophetic? How do you know that you're called to the office of a prophet? Secondly, you know by, and you can receive the prophetic office by it being imparted into you. Secondly, is by impartation, impartation. What is impartation? Impartation is when you are walking with a prophet. You are learning from a prophet. He is over you. He is, he is in your life. He is mentoring you. He is speaking into your life. And there comes a certain point where he begins to pray and he says, you know what? The same prophetic anointing that I carry, I release it into your life. That's when you can also receive that ability to step into the office of a prophet, and it's by impartation. The Bible tells us that Elisha walked with 
Elijah. Let me break this down for you. There was somebody who was a man of God. His name was Prophet Elijah. And uh, he was an incredible prophet of God. This prophet of God, there was, he was so anointed that even one time he was there and he literally called for the rain to stop and the rain literally stopped raining. And another time he called for the rain to start raining and it did start raining. There was another time that he called down fire and fire came. There was another time that he even prayed for a dead boy and the boy came back to life. Prophet Elijah was powerful. And he had somebody whose name was Elisha that he was walking with everywhere that he went. Come. Everywhere that he went, he would walk with Elisha. So I'm Elijah, he's Elisha. Everywhere he would go, he would go to Bethel, he would go to people's houses, he would go everywhere, and he would be walking with Elisha. Now, as the prophet was walking with Elisha, what happened over time is there was some grace, some anointing, some skill, some gifting that rubbed off on Elisha. And so Elisha ended up receiving the anointing, the giftings, the abilities upon Elijah by impartation, by fellowship by spending time with the man of God. How do you know if you are called to be a prophet? You got to spend time with a prophet. You are not a prophetess if you've had one vision. You are a sister who had a vision. Uh, you are not a prophet if you had a vision. You are a brother who had a who had a my question to people in this generation, oh, I'm called to be a prophet. My sister, my brother, who are you walking with? Where did you come from? Who's mentoring you? Who's teaching you the ropes? Who's telling you that this is what that color means? Who's telling you that this is what that number means? Who's telling you that when you feel this way, you say it like this? Who is who's coaching you? Who is your daddy? Who is your prophetic mentor? Who did you receive the prophetic? Can we trace you? Nowadays, we have people hopping on Instagram. I'm, I'm going to prophesy to you. I, I, I'm a prophet now. I, I can hear God's voice. I, I, I have my own ministry. I have my own prophetic ministry. I have my deliverance ministry. My question is, who ordained you? Who sent you forth? Who is covering you? Who is your daddy in the prophetic? Can we trace you? When another prophet sees you, can they say, mm, okay, that's a real authentic anointing. Okay, that's your father. Okay, that's his father. Okay, that's the, that's the lineage that you're part of. That, that's how you know that somebody is truly in the prophetic office. The third way that you know that you're in the prophetic office is by, of course, the Lord tells us in Psalm 37 that you can receive anything if you desire it. And so the third way that you can receive the office of a prophet is by desiring that office. If you desire it, if, he, if you can desire it, the Bible says, delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. If you are desiring to hear God's voice, you're desiring to be a prophet, you're desiring to be a prophetic voice, and you're truly desiring this thing, not because you have any personal gain, but you're desiring this thing because you want to help people. You want to help the church. God will give it to you. I see in this room that there's some people that God has, has, has anointed in this space with a unique prophetic grace. And I hear that after we leave here, there's going to be an outpour of the prophetic in this church. There's going to be proper prophecies, proper mentorship. There's going to be the prophetic anointing that came upon Jeremiah where you will say that I have been anointed, I've been ordained, I must speak the word of God because if I don't speak it, it'll be like fire shut up in my bones. I want you to know this, that maybe not all of us are called to the prophetic office, but God tells us in Joel chapter 2 verse 28 that in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh yes. and he says that he's about to pour out his spirit upon RJM he says he's about to pour out his spirit upon Ottawa he says he's about to pour out his spirit oh you didn't receive that I said the Lord said he's about to pour out his spirit upon this church he's about to pour out his spirit upon us in a new way 
He said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Not upon some, upon all. Then he says, what? Your sons and your daughters shall? Prophesy. Shall what? Prophesy. Shall do what? Prophesy. Does that mean that they are prophets? No. That means that they have the spirit of prophecy. Yes. Are you here tonight? Yes. We have to understand that God says, even in his word, that we must desire more to prophesy than to even pray in tongues. Why? Because when we begin to prophesy, we begin to edify, we strengthen yes. each other. Yes. But when we pray in tongues, we only speak to our Father that is in heaven. God says that everybody, in 1 Corinthians 14, God says that everybody must desire even to prophesy. The spirit of prophecy. That means that the spirit of God can come upon you in a way. And he will give you words, prophetic words, to give to specific people. And the Bible even tells us that one of the most sure words, the words that don't fall to the ground. How many of you know that sometimes when you prophesy, even under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that sometimes those words can fall down. Sometimes those words are not honored. I don't know if you've ever been in that situation where you've prophesied something and you know that you heard God. I, I heard God. I know I heard God. But that thing is just not happening. <laughs> it's not necessarily that maybe you didn't hear well, but God says that there's a stronger prophetic word. There's a stronger prophetic word that you must speak over people that will not fall down, that will not fall to the ground. And that, that prophetic word is the more sure word of prophecy. The Bible tells us that his word, the word of yes, God, yes, yes, the word of God, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19, it's the word of God yes. that is the more sure word of prophecy. Amen. Not all of us might be called to be prophets and operate in the prophetic office, but all of us are called to prophesy. Yes. And what are we prophesying? We must prophesy the word of God. Amen. We must prophesy the truth. We must prophesy the way. We must prophesy life. The Bible says in John 1 that, 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 that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And the Bible tells us that God's word can never return back to him void. And so if you have a prophetic word that says arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you, that prophetic word cannot fall to the ground because you are giving God his word. And the Bible says that God holds his word above his name. So yeah. when you begin to speak a word, if I come to Jesse and just I just hear the Lord tell me this over you, that, that God says that, that, that you will be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water. I just feel like God's about to plant you by some streams of living water. I feel that like you've been tired, but I hear that the Lord is going to plant you by his streams of living water. That prophetic word is stronger. Then you telling somebody, oh, your name is Sophia, you're from Ghana, you have this, you have your number is this, 61320. <laughs> that prophetic word, the prophetic word of God is stronger than any prophetic forensic word that you're trying to give to somebody. Right. If you want to prophesy, prophesy this. Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. If you want to prophesy, prophesy this. Yes. We, we got to understand that this word will never fall to the ground. You want to be a prophetic person? You want to prophesy? You want to see visions? Prophesy the word. Get to know the word. Get to know Jesus. Get to know God. Because when you get to know God, he will separate you. When you have the prophetic word, you can speak to any situation. You can speak to anything. And so the Bible will tell us in Ezekiel 37 that Ezekiel, I want you to prophesy to these dry bones. I want you to speak to every dry thing. The Bible tells us that there was this man. His name was Prophet Ezekiel. And the Bible says that Ezekiel found himself literally in a valley of dry bones. A valley of dead things. There were dead things around. And I understand that you've been teaching about, you know, the dry bones. I understand that. And the Bible tells us that Ezekiel was brought into this place of dryness. I don't know if you've ever been in that season in your life where everything around you just was not working. Your family was not working. Your relationships are not working. 
uh, your, 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 your happiness, your joy, it, everything was all just not working. It just, it just wasn't as you thought it would. You thought that you would get into this school. You thought you would get into this specific relationship. And if you got into that relationship, that you would be happy and that you would receive joy out of that. But as soon as you got there, there was no joy. As soon as you got there, there was no peace. As soon as you got there, things got dry. I, I, I remember in 2020, things just begot, be, became so dry. Just simple for me, just simple for me, some pads. Things became so dry. And I didn't know what God was doing next in my life. And I said, Lord, I don't know how we ended up in this position. But Lord, I, I need you to do something right now. There could be some people here in this room where you find yourself in a dry season. Everything around you is dry. Even your passion for God is dried up. You don't even know why you come to church sometimes. You don't know why you sing while you serve. You don't know why you're a Christian. Everything about your life is dry. And the Bible says that Ezekiel found himself in that position around dryness, around dead things. And instead of Ezekiel standing in that place of dryness and saying, Lord, I don't know what to do. Everything around me is not working. What God tells Ezekiel is God tells Ezekiel, I know that you're in the valley of dry bones, but Ezekiel, I'm going to need you to stand up and I'm going to need you to prophesy. Yes. To the dead things. Prophesy to the dried up things. Prophesy to your mind and tell your mind that you are not crazy. That anxiety will not have you. But you are a child of God. And you got to take the word that says God has not given me a spirit of fear. But God has given me. You saw what I did there. God has given me a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. I need somebody to get up off your chair and said I'm going to prophesy to every dry bone. Every dry thing. I'm going to need you to prophesy. I'm going to need you to prophesy and speak to every dry stone and speak to every dry thing. I'm going to need you to prophesy. I know there's some things right now that don't seem right in your life, but I want you to know something, that you might be in a dry situation but God says, don't just sit there. I need you to take the word of God and I need you to speak that word to every dead thing. What well, I want to encourage you alongside tonight is I want to encourage you alongside this that you have no choice but to get up from where you are and speak over that situation and say that situation will not overcome me but I'm hearing the voice of God and if I hear the voice of God I can speak the word of God you didn't hear what I said if you can hear the voice of God then you can speak the word of God and the word of God says that you are victorious the word of God says that he will carry you through the word of God says that he will carry you from where you are into a better place and the Bible says that Ezekiel prophesied to every dry bone and what happened is the dead things began to come together the bones began to come together and the peace came together and the joy came together and your life came together and your mind came together and things came together and when those things all came together the Bible says that there was an army that rose up out of River Jordan Ministries and that army went forth uh, my God I hear the Lord say that he's raising an army out of this church and the army of God is about to rise up in this city the army of God is about to rise up in this place and I hear the Lord say to prophesy use the word of God and prophesy to every dry bone prophesy to every dead thing there could be some dryness some deadness there could be some death but God says to prophesy because if you give the word of God attention God will fill up your spirit with the word anytime you come in contact with a difficult situation just speak the word of God prophesy to the dry bones and say you had me in the other season but in this season I speak the word of God 
I prophesy to you, Ottawa, and I say revival, come forth. And I prophesy to you, Ottawa, in this city, the Spirit of God will come upon all flesh, and we will prophesy, and we will see visions, and we will step into the calling that God has set for us in this season. God says, I'm raising an army, and if you are a part of the army of the Lord, I want you to take 30 seconds and lift your voice and shout! Oh, no, 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 no. I said you're shouting because you're part of the army. You're shouting because you're a part of the army. You're shouting because God is about to do a new thing. You're shouting because the dead things are coming back to life. You're shouting because the army of the Lord is coming forth in this city. The army of the Lord is coming forth in this city. The army of the Lord is coming forth. And I hear like boots marching. I hear boots marching. I hear boots marching. And you're taking steps forward. You're stepping forward. You're going forward. You're taking steps. I wish you would take a step forward. I wish you would take a step forward. Because you're in the army of the Lord God. Oh my God. Who can stand against the army of the Lord? Who can stand against the army of the Lord? Who can stand against? Who can stand against? Who can stand against the army of the Lord? Uh, who can stand against the army of the Lord? I hear the Lord say that he has sent, oh my God, the commander of the army of heaven with his sword drawn out and he will fight against every demon, against every principality. I want you to touch your neighbor and say it's time for war. I want you to touch another neighbor and say, neighbor, say, neighbor, it's time for war. It's time for war. The army of the Lord is coming forth. We are prophesying. We are speaking. We hear the word of God. We hear the voice of God. And we speak the word of God. Oh! Army, come forth. Army, come forth. Ottawa come forth, Ottawa come forth, come forth, step into your calling, step into your destiny, take your rightful place, you will not die, but you are stepping into the day, oh my God, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice, because the army of the Lord is coming forth in power and in might. I want you to grab another neighbor and say, neighbor, the army of the Lord is rising. We are rising. We are rising. I said, we're rising. We're rising. We're rising up from the ashes. We're rising up from the ashes. We're rising up. We're rising up as prophetic people. We're rising up as prophetic people. We are rising. The army is rising. Ottawa is rising. We are rising. Oh my God, I feel something. I feel something. I feel, I feel. Ow! Oh! The army is rising. The army is rising. And he said prophesy and he said prophesy not prophet lie but prophesy he said prophesy he said prophesy he said prophesy he said prophesy to these dry things oh my god oh my god oh my god your marriage won't be like your parents uh, prophesy prophesy Prophesy, their dead marriage uh, will not come over to you. Uh, my God, uh, God says prophesy. My goodness, uh, oh, the health issue in your family, it won't be your portion. Uh, God says prophesy. When you prophesy, it will skip you. My God, 
I heard the Lord say uh, that there's an anointing uh, that will come over this house uh, where there was evil. Uh, the Lord said that there, we, there will be a passing over. There will be a passing over. The Lord says that the evil will pass over because in this moment, uh, in this season, we understand that we are prophesying to every evil thing, every dead thing, everything. We're prophesying. Lift your voice uh, and shout unto God. I want you now to begin to prophesy to every dead thing in your life. I want you to prophesy to every dead thing. Listen, I don't know what is dead in your life, but I want you now to prophesy. Open up your mouth. Use the word of God. Find the word of God. If you are facing health issues, go to Psalm 6. My God, if you need some glory in your life, go to Isaiah 60. Listen, I need you to find the word of God and prophesy the word of God in your life. Prophesy, come on, prophesy the word. Speak some good things. Speak some good things. Speak some good things. Speak some things. Come on, somebody get on the microphone, pray with me. Someone speak some good things. Speak some good things. God, somebody prophesy. Speak some good things. I prophesy. I'm for greater works. I will do greater works. I prophesy. I will do greater works. I prophesy. I prophesy. I will do greater things. I prophesy. I prophesy. I'm rising up. I prophesy. I'm breaking forth. I prophesy. I am breaking out. I prophesy. I am breaking through. I prophesy. I will not be limited, but the hand of God will come upon me. How shall these things be? It will be when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Pray, 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 Lift it up, Every dry thing, 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 Push yourself out. Break yourself out. Yeah, yeah. 
Somebody pray. Clap your hands and pray. Clap your hands and pray. Something is shedding. The dry bones are coming to life. Somebody pray. Two more minutes. Two more minutes. Two more minutes. The dry things are coming back to life. Oh, 
It's all over you, sister. It's all over you. It's all over you. There's a fire. I see it. I see it. I see it over you, my brother. Take it. 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 There's some fire here. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Somebody help. Somebody help. Somebody help. Ah, take that fresh oil. Antos. 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 See ya. Lift your hands, sister. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Oh my God. 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 Oh my
It's all over right now. There's some people, you're going to feel some fire. You're going to feel something warm. You're going to feel a cold breeze. You're going to feel something. Anybody under the anointing, my God, bring them to me. Anybody at the count of seven, I want you to shout fire. There's an anointing in this room, my God. One, two, three, like a wind. Four, five, six, six. Six. At the count of seven, give me one shot. Come on, seven. Somebody shout. More fire upon your head. More fire. Anybody under the sound of my voice and the anointing, bring them to me. Fire. 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 There's fire here. There's fire here. Fire. Take it. Don't fight it. Just receive it. A strain anointing now. Oh, you guys, come, come quickly, come quickly, come, come, come quickly. Come stand here, stand here. Right, oh, lift your hands up. tell you that 
from today, the tears and the days of tears and the days of crying are over. The Lord told me to tell you that the days of weeping are over. The days of tears of sorrow and depression and even some anxiety and you've been struggling with your mental health and you haven't even told anybody about it. But I hear the Lord say that those moments where the enemy attacked your mind, the Lord says that those days are over. For the Lord would have me tell you right now, as I lay my hand upon you, that God has not given you a spirit of fear. He has not given you a spirit of fear. And the Lord says to be anxious for nothing. Because he's not giving you a spirit of fear, but he's giving you a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. And the Lord says right now that you will walk in this sound mind, you will walk in this clear mind, that the days where the enemy would attack you in the nighttime where you couldn't sleep, and sometimes you would try to wake up, but you can't wake up because you feel that there's something that is pushing you down and it's trying to hold you. And the Lord says that those days are over because I'm sending the angel of the Lord right now to your bedroom to sanctify that place. For from today, the workings of the enemy are over. And from today, the hand of God will come upon you in a new way. And you will receive a new mind and a new spirit. For the Spirit of the Lord says that I have anointed you with an anointing of influence. And the Lord says from today there will be an influence anointing that will come upon you. And you will influence people to do things for the kingdom of God. For I see that the Lord is bringing you into spaces of influence. And you will receive a platform to bring many to Christ. And thus saith the Spirit of the Lord God that everything that has happened in your past was for a reason. And that reason was for you to have a testimony. That you would have a testimony to speak. The thus saith the Lord to broken woman and woman that have faced anxiety and depression. And I speak right now to that spirit. Anxiety break off of her. Depression should break off of her fear break off of her her body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. somebody clap your hands and pray right now something's happening she must so oh break off of her Where's Jesse? Pastor Jesse, where is he? Pastor, this lady here, I want you to put her in positions uh, to influence. If you guys have a podcast, let her do that. If you have some creative stuff, let her do that. But I see that there is, she's born for the camera. Yeah. 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 She, she, she's born for the camera. She is. She's born for the camera. I'm telling you, this lady, when she stands up, She's a new lady. And she will be set on course to do everything that God has placed on the inside of her. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this lady, watch her because she's about to do a great thing. I pray for somebody. Brother, come to me. My spirit just connected with you. Just raise your hand. You, you, there, I want you to turn around three times. One, two, three. Listen, brother, you have been delayed for such a long time in your life. I see that there was almost like a rope that was around you, that was hindering you from progressing. In your family, there is a limitation that does not allow people to fulfill the, the full calling and the full destiny that God has ordained for them. Where's your father? He's in Uganda. He's in Uganda. Yeah. What, what does he do? Is, is he He's a professor. He's a professor. Yeah. Do you know something? that I see that the Lord has called him to wealth, but I see that that wealth has been with, withheld. 
And this issue now has come even down to you as well. Where there is money, money like you're supposed to walk in money, but I see that money has been tied up. And I see today that as you've turned around three times, you've unwound yourself. Yeah. From every plan of the enemy. Listen, I prophesy all around the world. I'm telling you this like the Spirit of the Lord is showing it to me right now. This Friday, I'm leaving. I'm going to Texas. I'm all around. And I'm telling you, the Lord called me to this meeting for you, to push you from where you are into that place of greatness and destiny. This guy here will control money and wealth. I said, this man here will control money and wealth. I want you, any idea that comes to your spirit, do it. Amen. Did you hear what I said? Any idea that comes to your spirit, do it. Amen. I see the Lord blessing you in that way. There's a creative anointing that is upon you, but I also see that there's even um, something about like uh, uh, cameras as well that is upon you. I see that the Lord is saying for you to step into like photography and videography Amen. and to step into things like that. Has he been doing, has he done that stuff before ever? Yeah. Preacher your posters. Amen. I see that, yes, I see that. And I see that there's photography and videography inside of you as well. But brother, I'm telling you, I want you to take your schooling seriously. Because I see that there's going to be some polish that will need to come upon you in order for you to step into the fullness of what God has called and, uh, and ordained uh, for you. And so brother, I want you to take your life seriously. Because there's some money and there's some wealth that is upon you, that is in your family. But we're praying today, right now, I want you to help me pray and clap your hands that anything that is withheld, his greatness, his finances, we speak better things over your life. We speak better things over your life. We speak greater works, greater things over your life. You will step into greatness. You will step into finances. You will step into double door blessings. I prophesy right now, my God, that may the joy of the Lord be upon you. May the finances be upon you. May God cause wealth to be in your hands. I pray, may God bless you like, 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 like Isaac. May you reap a hundredfold. May you reap a thousandfold. I prophesy this into your life. May money and wealth follow you and chase you. May goodness and mercy follow you and chase you. May that be your testimony. Jesus name. Lift your hands, wave your hands to heaven. Just wave your hands, just wave your hands, just wave your hands to heaven, just wave your hands. Amanzu la branta la makosaya. Kela manso da la branta la suanda la manzo da la dele bokosanda. Oh Father, bless your holy name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Imanzo, thank you, Jesus. You're so good. You're so good. Imanzo, that. Why am I seeing a, a dove upon your head? Come, brother. Come, come, brother. Come, come, brother. Manzunda la makona das. Why am I seeing a dove upon your head like that? The Holy Spirit is upon you. push you into deeper encounters. You will encounter God. The Lord said he's going to heal you. I see healing all over you. He said he's going to heal you. Healing. Throughout your body. Is there anybody here you need healing from God in your family? You need healing. Is there anybody in this room you need healing? Just put your, put, put your hand where, where that pain is. There was healing that just walked in the room. I want to pray for you, brother. If there's anybody you need healing, just, just put your hand where that pain is. Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for healing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You make all things new. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Receive it. You need healing. Anybody, just put your hand where the pain is. Just close your eyes. Father, I pray right now. I pray right now over your people. I pray, Holy Spirit. Anybody who needs healing in this atmosphere. Lord, I speak and I command that their body 
would be made whole. I stretch my hand and I decree and declare over them, may the healing power of the Almighty God come upon them in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, any crooked area in their body, may their body be made whole in Jesus' name. I speak to every heart issue. I speak to every uh, 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 blood issue. I speak to every tendon, ligament, nerve in their body, in their mind. I command the healing power of the Holy Spirit right now. May it come upon you in Jesus' name. I speak 100% healing in your body. I feel it right now. Mansunda. Lord, I speak healing over them in Jesus' name. May their body function as it should in Jesus' name. I come again every back pain I come against every migraine I come against every heart issue I come against every pain in the bone I come against it in Jesus name may their bodies be made whole Lord your word says that by your stripes we are healed therefore father we use that word and we prophesy to every health issue Lord may you make every health issue vanish in Jesus name now I want you to just to test your body. I want you to test your body. I want you to check to see that your body has been made whole, been made better. There's some people you had some pain in your body. You couldn't move. You couldn't touch your toes, but now you can. You couldn't touch. You couldn't jump. I want you to test your body. Just test your body. Just test your body. See that God has touched you in a new way. I know that God has done a new thing in this place. I'm on soda, Bacando, Saya. I want you now just to begin to celebrate the Lord because he's so mighty. <laughs> in this place. He's mighty. He's mighty. He's mighty. RJM, I want you to celebrate the Lord because he's here. He's doing a new thing. Every dry bone come back to life. RJM, we love you. May God bless you and we'll see you next week, Saturday at Capital Revival. God bless you, Pastor Jesse. Love you. Would you do it better for Jesus? Would you do it better for Jesus? Come on, would you make some noise for Jesus in the house? Come on, if Jesus is so good, would you make some noise for Jesus in the house? Open up your mouth and say, We give glory to God. Glory to God. Come on, say it now. We lift your name up. Glory to God. Whoa. Give God glory for the life of Prophet Ralph Darte. Oh, come on. After a prophet does something like that and he releases what's on the inside of him to you, and this is how you want to appreciate the prophet, I said, can we appreciate Prophet Ralph Darte? Come on, RJM, don't embarrass me. Could we appreciate Prophet Ralph Darte? of him and we thank God that we could receive of a true man of God you know not everybody that holds a microphone is a true man of God you know that 
But we thank God that we can receive of a true man of God. One more time, would you appreciate the life of Prophet Ralph Darty this I love you, God. Thank you for releasing. Thank you. Thank you. How many of you feel like something has shifted in the house tonight for you? Oh, I, I can only tell by your voice. How many of you, something has shifted, something has changed. You felt something. This, the prophetic nature on the inside of you is just something is being stirred. This is who we are as believers. And we believe in the word of God. Oh, come on. I said we believe in the word of God. Knowing that that same word is God himself. We believe in his word. And we know that every prophetic word that was spoken here is sealed in Jesus' name. Come on. I said we know that every word that was spoken on this altar is sealed in Jesus' name. Brother Ralph, RJM thanks you. RJM thanks you. You know what? Could, could you help him to the back? I know he's tired. The prophet is tired. Could you help him? Um, thank you, prophet. Thank you, brother. Why don't you appreciate him as he goes? I believe that your life is never this. I believe that your life is never the same. And after tonight, I don't believe that you're going back home the same person that you came here. Because as, as I told you guys last week, you know, there are prophets, for sure. But then there are prophets. You know what I'm saying? And we believe that a prophet has visited, visited us. Like, a prophet, like capital P, you know what I'm saying? And so we give God glory for that. Listen, we gotta get home. It's late, and y'all got school tomorrow. If you got your envelopes, or if you got that stuff, we're just gonna give real quick. We're gonna give to God. If you know that you appreciate God for everything that He is, everything that He's done. If you know that you're not stingy with the God is who has given you literally everything, would you prepare to give to Him? Where to give you? If you guys have like envelopes and things like that, would you project the e-transfer e method? We know that God would not give, or God would not demand of us if He did not already give to us. For He gives seed to the sower. If you got the the, the method, can we project it up, up on the screen? If you got the method, you can project it on the screen. This series is over. Next week, I'm starting a new series, and um, we're going to be talking about worship, worship, the importance of that, and um, of course, that is in preparation for our worship night that is going to be on October 31st. You know, the one we run it back every single year. This, this year, it's going to be on a Tuesday night, and um, we'll be announcing the guest speaker, we'll be announcing everything in the next weeks to come. But I'm starting a new thing. So if you know somebody, tell somebody to tell somebody to tell somebody to be in the house of the Lord next week. Uh, not next week, two weeks from now. Because next week, I believe we have a fun night, if I'm not mistaken. We have a fun night next week. So y'all come out next week. But I am starting a new series. And uh, we give God glory. Because even next week, before the fire on October 31st, we know that we have something called Capital Revival, Capital Revival. How many of you are excited for Capital Revival? Yo, everybody in this room should be here on September 30th, which I believe, if I'm not mistaken, is next Saturday. What's the date today? So yeah, so it should be next Saturday. Now, if you don't know what Capital Revival is, God gave Prof a vision and he shared it with myself and other churches that every single year we will bring churches together last year we had about 400 people 450 something like that at the KM theater at Carleton University and it was powerful who, who remembers Capital Revival and uh, 
well next week we're running that back again and I know that it was full to capacity 450 people but I don't know if it's just me I'm expecting more people than capacity you know I'm expecting more we prophesy that into life in Jesus name and so do not make a mistake okay D don't make a mistake of missing an event like if, if y'all thought that our jam Wednesday was cool today my friend capital revival is going to be fire jam packed how many of you believe that so we're, we're gonna be with bridge next week uh, after our fun night which is on Wednesday then on the Saturday we will be heading over to Carleton University KM Theater. Please prepare your spirits and make sure that everybody in the city of Ottawa knows that there was a capital revival, amen. I wanna pray for you as, you as you do the offerings, as you give. Father God, we thank you for everybody in this house. We pray, Lord, that as they sow their seed, Lord, they will reap plenty, God. We pray in the name of Jesus, God, even for those who do not have what to give, Lord, would you fill their pockets, Lord, so that they may know that the God that we pray to today has blessed them in such a way that I must show him appreciation, God. We pray, Lord, for every giver and every person who is here today, Lord, and we thank you, God, because you are good. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Next week is fun night, all right? Are you ready to receive fire? Or oh, even better, did you receive fire tonight? Where's the energy? Where's the energy? Did you receive fire tonight? Fire, fire, fire. Fire, fire, fire. For the Lord is on the throne. Things already better.